Hi, this is Justin Zweifel, fish passage biologist with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Today I'm going to show you how to do a level A barrier assessment using the protocol in the Fish Passage Barrier and Surface Water Diversion Screening Assessment and Prioritization Manual. Let's do it. The first thing you should do is complete the Site Identification Field Form, which is used to record location, fish use, and ownership data, along with other important information about the site as a whole. Instructions can be found on the back side of the site identification field form located in Appendix C of the manual. The Level A Culvert Evaluation Field Form can also be found in Appendix C of the manual, and it's the field form that we'll go through step by step in this video. Site ID is a unique identifier for each stream crossing used in the WDFW Fish Passage Database. Record your initials in the date of the Level A assessment. This culvert currently does not have a site ID in the Fish Passage and Diversion Screening Inventory Database, so we'll assign it a new, unused site ID 999XXX. The field crew is Justin Zweifel and Cade Roller. The date of assessment is May 1, 2015. This is the culvert that we're going to use today for our Level A data collection. However, as we go through the steps, we'll show you some conditions at other culverts that you'll frequently encounter while in the field. Culvert number identifies individual culverts when you have multiple culverts at a crossing. There's only one culvert at this crossing, so record 1.1. When you have multiple culverts at a crossing, for culvert number, use the format x.y, where x is a number for each individual culvert and y is the total number of culverts. So here we have culvert number 1.2 and culvert number 2.2, where 1.2 should be on the left bank looking downstream. For each of these culverts, you'll need to fill out a level A field form and do the full level A assessment. When you have multiple culverts at a crossing, you need to determine which ones should be assessed for fish passage and which ones are just overflow culverts. At the upstream end, draw an imaginary line through the middle of the lowest culvert. And if the invert of any other culvert is above that line, then it's just an overflow culvert. Overflow culverts go into the comments. So at this site, I would just record 0.67 meter round smooth steel overflow culvert on the left bank. And I would only do the level A assessment for this culvert. The material of this culvert is corrugated steel, or CST. Span is the horizontal dimension of the culvert. 1.81 meters. The rise is the vertical dimension of the culvert measured from the inside bottom to the inside top. If there's stream bed material, you'll want to use a gravel probe to locate the inside bottom of the culvert. Now that I've located the invert, or inside bottom of the culvert, I'm going to measure the distance from the top of the gravel probe to the inside top of the culvert. I get 0.59 meters, plus I know that this gravel probe is 1.22 meters, so that gives me a rise of 1.81 meters. Because the rise and span of this culvert are the same, this is a round culvert. The water depth in culvert should be measured at the downstream end. I got 0 0.07 meters. A hydraulic drop can occur at the outlet, inlet, or inside of the culvert. If you can see throughout the entire length of the culvert and verify that there's no hydraulic drop, Record a zero. 
When there is no hydraulic drop, you should also record NA for drop location. Plunge pool measurements only apply when there is a hydraulic drop, so you should record NA in the plunge pool description section. Now we're at a site that has a hydraulic drop. Measure any drops from water surface to water surface. This culvert has a 0 0.40 meter hydraulic drop and the drop location is the outlet. If the culvert has a hydraulic drop at the outlet, measure the plunge pool length from the tail out of the plunge pool to the culvert outlet. This plunge pool has a length of 5.5 meters. Use a stadia rod to find the plunge pool maximum depth. 0 0.90 meters. Also measure the plunge pool scour line width. 6.4 meters. The length of the culvert is measured to the nearest tenth of a meter. You can do this with a stadia rod, a measuring tape, or a laser rangefinder. The length of this culvert was 17.1 meters. There are multiple types of surveying equipment available for measuring invert elevations for culvert slope, including the autofocus level, some types of laser rangefinders, and you could also use a rotary laser. Culvert slope is the difference in the upstream invert elevation and the downstream invert elevation divided by the total length. Think of it as rise over run. To measure invert elevation using laser survey equipment, you'll want to extend the stadia rod with a reflective target from the invert of the culvert up to a level that can be detected by the survey equipment. This culvert has stream bed material, so I used a gravel probe to locate the invert of the culvert. So then I'll place the stadia rod on top of the probe and extend up to the survey equipment. The downstream invert elevation was 0.26 meters lower than the upstream invert elevation. So I divide 0.26 by the culvert length, which is 17.1, to get 0.0152. I'll multiply by 100 to get a percentage, so my culvert slope is 1.52%. Remember that a culvert slope may be positive or negative. Road fill depth is the vertical distance from the culvert invert to the top of the road prism, rounded to the nearest meter. Here the road fill depth is about 6 meters. For a culvert to be countersunk, it should be embedded in the stream bed, a minimum of 20% of the rise at the outlet, with stream bed material throughout the entire length of the culvert. After locating the downstream invert with a gravel probe, I'll remove the probe and measure the depth of the stream bed material on the stadia rod. 0.66 meters. 0.66 meters is greater than 20% of this culvert's rise at the outlet. And there was bed material throughout the length of the culvert all the way to the inlet. So countersunk is yes. If you're at a site with a bottomless arch culvert, record countersunk yes. The culvert is backwatered if there's little to no visible flow throughout the entire length of the culvert. This culvert is not backwatered. Baffles are a type of fishway located inside of the culvert. This culvert does not have baffles. Now we're at a site where there's baffles throughout the culvert. If you have a baffled culvert, record the material and the number of baffles. Here we have 14 metal baffles. 
also check yes for Fishway and then fill out a Fishway field form. Because there were 14 metal baffles, you would select Fishway Yes and also complete the Fishway field form located in Appendix C of the manual. Aprons may be located at the downstream, the upstream, or at both ends of a culvert. If an apron is not evident and there's stream bed material present, use a gravel probe to try to detect an apron. This culvert did not have aprons. This is a culvert that has aprons at both the upstream and downstream ends. For this culvert, record apron both. Also include the aprons in the total length of the culvert and measure your invert elevations at the end of the aprons to calculate slope. If a culvert has a tide gate, flood gate, or other type of gate, select yes for tide gate and describe in the comments. This culver does not have a gate. At this site, we have a culvert with a gate. So for this culvert, you would check yes for tide gate and then describe in the comments. A fishway is a man-made structure that facilitates fish passage through, around, or over a barrier. A fishway may be located upstream, downstream, or within the culvert. This culvert does not have a fishway. Now we're at a site where there's a fishway located downstream of the culvert. For this site, you would record fishway yes, and then fill out the fishway field form. The fishway field form is located in Appendix C of the manual. Measure bankful width at a cross section outside of the culvert influence. The average bankful width at this site was 2.30 meters. Now I will divide the culvert span by the bankful width to get a culvert span to channel width ratio of 0 0.79. Now that we have completed all of the level A data collection for site ID 999XXX, we can use the level A flowchart from the manual to determine if the culvert is passable, a barrier, or if a level B assessment is required to determine passability. To request fish passage training, or for technical assistance with evaluating road crossing structures, please contact the WDFW Habitat Program at taps at dfw.wa.gov. Thanks for watching.